Hello and welcome to the Friday, October 18th, 2024 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Quick diary today from Guy about attacks that he has seen emerging from an Amazon cloud network. Interestingly, only scanning for port 8080, so likely looking for proxies. Among some of the data that uh, Guy here is going over, I actually find the TTLs kind of interesting. They don't quite match what I would expect, uh, but hey, if anybody has any other ideas what to look at uh, here with this data, uh, please let us know. This is one of those odd cases where it's not really clear why or what is exactly happening, but uh, would be nice to learn a little bit more about it. And Palo Alto published a blog post with several ways how macOS is not properly enforcing the quarantine attribute on downloaded files. Whenever a file is downloaded by the user, this quarantine attribute is set. And then the first time the user executes the file, a warning should pop up that warns the user that they just downloaded this file and the website it was downloaded from. This is similar to the mark of the web, which in Windows, also caused many different ways how it could be bypassed and actually what you're seeing here with these different ways how this quarantine attribute can be bypassed is very similar to some of the attacks that we have seen in Windows against the mark of the web. For example, if the user downloads an archive, a zip file, and then unzips it, the files being unzipped do not automatically have this uh, quarantine attribute set. And as a result, if a user executes one of those files, well, there will be no warning. So it's really a problem with these uh, utilities, in particular archiving utilities, uh, that they do not set this attribute correctly. They should just propagate whatever the attribute was for the file they are unarchiving, unzipping, or untarring. And before we get into some noteworthy vulnerabilities, just a general note that Oracle did release its quarterly critical patch update. This particular update fixes 334 different vulnerabilities. As usual, too many here to really summarize them in any meaningful way. But remember, the reason this number is so large is because it also does cover the entire Oracle application portfolio. So the first challenge is always figuring out which one of these applications are you actually running. We got an update from Cisco. Cisco updated its ATA190 analog telephone adapters. The the vulnerabilities being addressed here are related to firmware updates with these adapters and can lead, of course, to a complete compromise of the device. There are a number of different vulnerabilities. Remember that the firmware update with these adapters sometimes happens over insecure channels like HTTP or even TFTP that enables some of these vulnerabilities from being from being exploited. So So uh, definitely something you do want to address, do want to update. There is for some of these vulnerabilities at least sort of a workaround where you basically disable some of the firmware updates. And then we have an interesting vulnerability being disclosed by the Red Race SAP security team. Of course, it affects SAP. And the vulnerability is a code injection vulnerability in SAP NetWeaver AS Java. It does affect the log viewer plugin. And essentially the problem here was, well, you could upload whatever file you wanted in the log viewer up, uh, plugin, which then could lead to code execution. So the quick mitigation here is, of course, to just limit the file types that can be uploaded. Apparently, it's sufficient to just limit the extensions of the files being uploaded. And of course, updates are available. There is an SAP note that is referenced in the blog post I'll link to with additional details. And finally, a little bit of different note, retired handler Tom Liston for many years now is 
tracking essentially uh, spammers that are using compromised websites in order uh, to advertise usually pharmaceuticals. Well, uh, one particular odd case here is that websites within the Department of Commerce are routinely posting this kind of spam and so far nobody really is paying any attention to it. So if anybody knows anybody at the Department of Commerce that may be able to address some of this, apparently much of it is also just data feeds that are being included in the Department of Commerce's website that are then carrying uh, this uh, basically spam and uh, with that exposing it to uh, the public via this trusted.gov website. Anyway, that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.